Welcome to Inside Major League Pickleball, your stop for all things MLP. I'm Will Dotton, joined by the voice of Pickleball himself, Mr. Dave Fleming. How are you, Dave? Thrilled to be here, Will, and we are almost to the end. Just two events left. So much to talk about today. It's crunch time, Dave. At the end of the season, every team will have played 23 matches, and we're just a few days away from our penultimate regular season event in Las Vegas. We're going to have some teams there, though, that it's their final chance to earn points and make the playoffs. Just look at the graphic. We've got nine teams where this will be their final event. The pressure's on, Dave. It is, because you know that there's going to be teams going to Miami after Las Vegas, and your work's going to be done. Now, this is kind of like a golf tournament where a guy gets hot that was down the leaderboard a little bit and puts up a very low number, and then you just hope it holds up. Same thing applies here. So when we look at what we have on the graphic behind us, Dallas Splash obviously are fighting to get in that top two spot. They are a terrific team. Columbus maybe playing for next year. We'll see how they do. The Shock also playing for that top two. So when you talk about that and getting the bye, what you want to do is just get as many points as you can in Las Vegas and go. Texas Ranchers would be the same. And then there's our cute, beloved Utah Black Diamonds, who uh, have made a lot of moves to improve the pocketbook. They have done a lot in the culture around Utah. When they played in Utah, Will, it was magic. They had everybody going crazy. So they're going to look to next year. We'll talk about some of those trades. What do you see from the challenger group back here? Yeah, I mean, I think looking at looking at Bay Area, uh, you know, they had a rough midseason made a lot of roster adjustments, but they really came back with a vengeance in Virginia Beach. Uh, they're now squarely in that playoff race, and I believe they're fourth place. We'll, we'll get to the standings here in a little bit, but they're going to want to kind of carry that momentum into Las Vegas and end the season on a high note. Uh, looking at the Las Vegas Night Owls, kind of a, the opposite situation. Yeah. Did not have a good run in Virginia Beach, and now they're actually outside of that playoff picture as it stands right now. Uh, so, you know, they're going to be extra motivated playing in front of their hometown crowd and wanting to end the season on a high note. So, like you said, all teams, every single match matters no matter where you are in the standings. It's really just about setting yourself up for success depending on what happens in Miami with the other teams. Yeah, and I think the other big thing that we're going to be keeping an eye on is there's three points available for every match. So if you can avoid the dream breaker and grab all three points, especially if it's a team you are chasing that you're playing against, that's going to be interesting. So I want to see if the coaches and general managers adjust strategy knowing wait, we got to get this done before we get to a dream breaker. So just winning the match 2-1 and only having that one point differential might not be good enough here. So something for all of us to keep an eye on, that's for sure. And just to kind of add on to that, you know, it's at this point earlier in the season, it's more about, oh, how many points can I get from this match, right? Like I'm, you're not really focused on any other teams. Well, now it's late, you have your targets. And so, like you said, Dave, it is all about that point differential. But let's go ahead and look at these standings, the premier level standings, just give you a clear, clear picture of what is at stake in Las Vegas. Again, we know the top two teams get a buy in the playoffs and the top six teams make the playoffs, Dave. So kind of looking at the standings now, uh, you know, St. Louis and Dallas, they are in those top two spots. They would get the buy if the season ended today. But New Jersey Fives, on a points per match basis, they are the top dog. So you have to assume that one of those top two seeds is going to go to New Jersey. Yeah, they just, they're like Jason from Friday the 13th. They won't go away, those freaking clowns. All they do is win, and then they get to a dream breaker and they win. They had a great run in New York in their backyard, which was not surprising. Red noses and big feet everywhere. Um, and Annalie Waters. Talked to her a lot this year about Major League Pickleball. Obviously, they won the mid-season tournament, so she has a win in Major League Pickleball now, which is something she hadn't done. But I think she's enjoying Major League Pickleball more than she has in the past, and the results show. So some combination of what you just said is going to be those top two. And why is that big? Because the margins are so thin, Will. So if you get one of the buys into the automatic semis, you don't have to play anybody. I mean, that is terrific when you look at a team where 29-27, 27-29, all these tight matchups, you just don't want to have to deal with that. So we'll be looking at the top two. 
And then the six, seven, eight range, who is going to sneak into the playoffs, who is going to limp into the playoffs potentially. But you just want to get there because then the slate is clean. Right. And, you know, you kind of talk about that five, six, seven right now. We've got the New York Hustlers in five, DC Pickleball team in six, and your squad, the Carolina Pickleball Club in seven. I know we'll talk about this later. You're trying to make a run and kind of overtake New York and or DC to finish, to find that final playoff spot. Looking at the challenger level standings, you know, we have great parity at the premier level, but I think the parity is on, it's clearer at the challenger level. I mean, just the, you have this group of three at the beginning, SoCal, yep. Chicago, and Miami. Uh, you know, they're kind of those top dogs. And I just want to say, not to be that guy, a few episodes ago, <laughs> here we go. I said here comes Chicago, the Chicago. Here it I comes. said the Chicago <laughs> Slice would make the playoffs and they're gonna. They're I'm going. Just gonna you're, give it to you're, you're gonna give it to I'm me. I'm gonna give it They're to you. They're going to. You put your. You put it out there. You just sat in that very chair and said, "I know they're playing garbage right now, and they're gonna. They're gonna come out of this and make it." And Megan Fudge, Jack Monroe, and the rest of that squad have upped their level, and they are in a very nice position now. So I appreciate that. I feel. Yeah. I feel validated here from <laughs> from Dave Fleming. But no, those top three teams. Pretty clearly going yeah. to make the playoffs. But then we talked about Bay Area had a great run in Virginia Beach. And Las Vegas kind of – so they are in number six right now. But on a points-per-match basis, they would uh, be in that seven spot. So they're going to be extra motivated to try and kind of get back into there. And you've got Brooklyn Aces as well. They started Virginia Beach, I believe, in that top – or no, excuse me. They started New York in that top spot. And they have fallen, but they did make some moves at the trade deadline that we'll, we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but no, one other team I need to talk about at the challenger level, Atlanta Bouncers. Yes. They're in number five right now, and they made some moves during the second waiver period, adding Susanna Barr and Emily Cedarquist. That team went 0-6 together in women's doubles in Virginia Beach, but the mixed doubles pairings for Atlanta have been absolutely amazing. Jaume Martinez, Vic, and Barr went six and zero. Oh. I believe Todd Fote and Emily Cedarquist were five and two or, or uh, five and one. So that's really been the difference maker for Atlanta. So I'm interested to see if they're going to be able to keep it up and maintain that playoff spot, even with all of these teams behind them so so closely. And you talk about the top four teams, the semifinalists making it. That doesn't mean that if you're number six or five in the standings that you don't make the playoffs. If you win, if you beat the three or the four seed, you or you do get promoted. Yes. Right. So that just you know obviously those top two teams are automatically going to get promoted just with uh, you know when they get that first round by, but. With how much parity there is, those first round playoff matches oh, yeah. are going to be absolutely electric. Dave. Yes, because they are the quarterfinals to move on and win a title, which is awesome. Obviously. But if you just win those, your ownership might be season well done, we got promoted. And just so everybody knows, and we'll talk a lot more about this as we get closer. These are best two out of three individual events within themselves. So let's just say the Shock are playing the Ranchers. They will play a whole match and then play another one. And if it's 1-1, one, one, then we will break that tie with a third one. So it's like a little Major League Baseball playoff series that we're going to have with these teams in the playoffs, which is going to be a lot of fun. Cannot wait for that. I just I got goosebumps in my chair just listening uh, to you describe that, Dave. But before we get there, we've got these events. We've also got some trades to go yes. over. And so let, let's talk about some of that. You see Paris Todd on the screen there. We're going to start off with you, Dave. The yeah. Carolina Pickleball Club sending Jesse Irvin to the Arizona Drive. I love the trade for both teams, but I want to hear it from you. What, uh, what are you expecting to come out of this trade? Very simple. We're one and six in Dream Breakers, <laughs> and uh, Caitlin Christian is top five singles. Brooke Buckner just put on a show against Anna Lee Waters in the finals, coming up just short at Virginia Beach. So Ben Johns, if he just takes care of business, which he does most of the time, and you want to run into Ben, Colin, Caitlin, and Brooke in a dream breaker, you don't. Now, we may miss the playoffs because of that one and six record. Those, if you just flip that, that's five more points in the standings. That might be the difference. Jesse played great, so it's just a matter of singles prowess. We'll see if she actually is that 
fix for the Arizona side in the doubles part of the things because they haven't been where they wanted to. So both sides think they're getting what they need to adjust, and it all comes down to what happens on the 20 by 44. And I think what you said about Jesse Irvin going to Arizona, I do like that move. I think you know they're going to have Lacey Schneeman on the left. She thrives there, has had some really good women's yeah. doubles runs. Uh, and Jesse Irvin, obviously such a great right side player, has had a really strong run and mixed recently with Gabe Tardio. So I'm excited to see who she plays with, either Andre Diascu or Dylan Frazier. But, you know, obviously good for you guys with the Dream Breakers, but I, I like it for Arizona yeah. as well. You don't often see that in, in pro sports, mutually beneficial <laughs> trades. Uh, you, there's usually someone who's kind of trying to fleece the other person, at least I know from fantasy football. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I, I, I like it for both you guys. Now let's talk about the Columbus Sliders. They made some moves, almost changing their entire team. Yeah. They've now got Paris Todd and Callie Smith, a completely new women's doubles duo. How do you like that move for them? It's wild because... Uh, all of a sudden, this lady behind us, uh, playing a lot with Viv, is now no longer there down in Orlando. I think they were surprised that that didn't work as well as they thought it would. So Orlando wanted to make a deal, and then Columbus, just everything changed. I think Megan Design going out of there is wild because she is one of those very high ceiling, where's the floor kind of a player. And it just... With Riley getting better and better throughout the years, he's played more, you feel like, oh my gosh, this is a team that's going to go, and now it's going to be complete bedlam. The other thing they're going to be dealing with is the injury for Jay Devilliers, so Roscoe Bellamy's in there. So Andrea Coop is now going to be playing Challenger, being traded out of there. So they're a team that is way down in the standings. The chemistry didn't look great over there. So maybe they can find something and build for next year because that's the other thing going on here. My trade has a little bit to do with that as well. But the idea of let's make a push for this year, but let's see if the pieces that we put together can really set us up for next year, and now Columbus is going to have the opportunity to do that. And I think they were very forward-looking with this trade because Riley Newman and Paris Todd have had success yes. at PPA and mix. Now once Jay Devillier is healthy, he and Callie Smith have had some good results at PPAs. And even looking for Orlando, you've now got Megan Dazon and Tyson McGuffin again. They started this year playing together. Yeah. I believe they got a bronze in uh, Palm Springs to start off the year. So. They have that chemistry. Fed's going to continue playing with Vivian David. So Orlando, a lot of matches to play still in, in the regular season. So definitely not out of it yet. But those trades certainly shaking up the MLP landscape ahead of our penultimate event this weekend in Las Vegas. Let's go to some of those storylines and really kind of dive into the details of everything we're going to see. This uh, event coming at the tail end of the PPA event that's yes. there this week. So fatigue might be something that, uh, that, that plays a role here with these matches. But just starting off, it's make or break time for the AZ Drive and Orlando Squeeze. Orlando, they've only played 12 matches so far this year. They have 11 matches to play in Las Vegas and Miami. Arizona, they've only played 13. Still 10 matches to go. So a huge opportunity for both of these squads. Yeah, and it's wild how the schedule has worked out because some teams played really well earlier in the year when maybe they didn't have as many matches. In this case, some of these teams with all the trades still have a bulk of their schedule to play. So if it was a winning trade, they're gonna really reap the rewards from that. We have seven matches left, so it's about a third of the, of the season. So still getting that, but it's not like we have the 10, 11, 12 matches left like some of these other teams. So that's a big part of this. And the fives who we talked about before haven't played a lot either, so they have a lot to play for and a lot of matches to go prove it. And you talk about with the fives, you know, they have a lot to play for, but also a lot to lose yeah. as well. I mean, they, they do have such a high uh, average points per match. And so if you have a bad event, a couple bad runs, you know, you can see that number with how few matches they've played really start to decrease. For sure. But speaking of your seven matches for Carolina, you're eyeing the New York Hustlers yes. right now because on a points per match basis, they are in the sixth seed What's it going to take to catch that team in, in, in these next two events? Me cheering my butt off for whoever's playing <laughs> New York, I guess. Uh, no, I mean, I think that's what's fun. I mean, all of us that are sports fans and other sports, hockey, baseball, football, 
you start scoreboard watching, and that is going to be a thing now with Major League Pickleball. So that's going to be talked about a lot on the broadcast about what's going on over here, how does A affect B affect C, and uh, in some cases you're going to want the teams at the top to win, even though it doesn't make sense intuitively, like you're going to be farther away from them. No, I need them to do damage on those teams at that six cut line. So there's going to be a lot of looking at what's going on and that whole 2-1 dream breaker situation where some team ekes out that last mix and gets and grabs that one point, that might end up being the difference. And you, you talk about scoreboard watching, Dave. I saw a lot of that in Virginia Beach. You're kind of walking around, listening to the coaches, the GMs. Oh, like who's playing? Like who do we want to win that yeah. match? So it's, it was already starting in Virginia Beach. I'm sure it's only going to be that much more potent in Las Vegas and Miami. But in Las Vegas, we've got some incredible matchups. Let's look at the marquee matchups for next week. Starting on Monday, starting off strong, the Texas Ranchers taking on the New Jersey Fives. Yeah, so this is that top of the standings battle and – you know, the ranchers know they've, they've got some injury situations. Etta Wright dinged up uh, her ankle or something, had to scratch from women's doubles. I believe she's going to be fine. But then as we talked about, the Carvana PPA tour is right in front. So you're going to have to grind through that. She'll be the third seed with Megan Design. So that is often a very long run. Christian Alshon has been dealing with something. He's had the knee covered. He's had to scratch from singles quite a bit. So in talking to their folks, they're worried about just the health of their team, whereas the fives are going to come in here. They're going to be counting to five. It's obnoxious, but they love it. And they just want to put the stamp on what you talked about before. We have the highest points per match in Go away, Texas. And we'll see, you know, if any dream breakers for Texas are to occur, you know, we'll see how Christian Alshon is moving. You know, obviously hasn't played singles, like you said. So something to keep an eye out for Texas, yeah. not only in this match, because it could very well go to a dream breaker, but also in their other matches as well. We've also got the Orlando Squeeze taking on the Columbus Sliders. They just made a trade yeah. with each other. Let's see who comes out on top. And there's only one way to find out. Get them on the 20 by 44. That's right. And, uh, I just want to see if Megan Design just builds on the momentum of somebody saying, we'd like you, and we're trading Paris Todd for you, and whether that is the thing that gets her going. The same going the other way with Paris, playing with a familiar partner in Riley Newman and Mixed and, and going out there. And sometimes, you know, you hear this about sports all the time. Just a change of scenery sometimes is what you need, whether it's the chemistry of the team, just who you're partnered with here. And while these two teams are lower in the standings because of the amount of matches, especially Orlando plays, they're certainly not out of it, but it's pretty darn close to needing to run the table. Right. And Specifically with Orlando, I'm excited to see Megan Design play with Vivian David. They actually have had some success on the PPA Tour in 2023. They actually took home silver uh, in, in Austin. So they've played together. Megan played the left in that. We know her now as more of a right side power. Uh, but really interested to see if she plays the left with Vivian David, which she probably I will. can almost assure you that she will. All right. Because Viv, Viv on the right is so solid there. We did see, and that was the thing that was interesting with Orlando, we did see some back and forth. But Viv, I mean, I, we, everyone loves her. Everyone loves having her as a partner. She will be great for Megan from that standpoint. But I think you're going to see Megan on the left. I'd be surprised if you don't. You heard it here first <laughs> from uh, Dave Fleming. Moving on to Tuesday, another trade battle. Yep. Your team, Carolina, taking on the AZ yep. drive. I mean, I guess we'll see who comes out on top. Yeah, the interesting thing about this particular team is their dudes just seem like they should be wrecking people. Andre and Dylan Frazier are very good. They haven't won as much as you would think that they would. And then you had Lacey and Caitlin, and they were just scuffling a little bit, as were our ladies. And we've made a couple trades with, with the ladies on, on our side. So who does Ben play against? Who does Ben play with? I'm not leaving that out on the, on the, on the show here, because that's going to be something that we Ta-da! We wouldn't and, expect you to. Yeah, no, that'll, <laughs> that'll debut. But I think, you know, Morgan and I, Morgan Evans, their general manager, had a lot of discussions about how do we potentially help 
each other in a trade, and we're not trying to help each other, we're trying to help our team, but is there something mutually beneficial? We'll see how all the matches around it go, but this will be very interesting, and I don't know how they're going to play. I know how we're going to play, and I think it'll be better. And then we've got another Battle for Texas, the second installment of this matchup this season. Dallas Flash taking on the Texas Ranchers. The Ranchers won this to take third place at the midseason yes. tournament. They haven't played since then, and it's been a while for both of these teams. So I'm excited for them to run it back. Both teams near that top of the standings looking to capture that number two spot. Yeah, the Flash were ticked off when they lost that one. And, you know, this is a team that I love how they've embraced Major League Pickleball. They've got a squad that they take out there, Mark Moulton, their owner of one of many that is really involved. I love to see that engagement. Uh, they've had exhibitions here in Dallas, and they really like their team. You know, J-Dub's got the 12 on his back for where he was chosen in the standings. It's, you know, there's a lot more personality there than people who just watch him play, and it's subtle things like that that I love. So he and Georgia obviously just made a great run to the final in Virginia Beach on the Carvana PPA tour side. So there are a handful. Tyra's playing terrific right now as well. Well, and then Augie Guz, the guy actually on that team that I want to kind of see because he was the it boy at the beginning of the year, and then we haven't seen awesome results from him on the Carvana PPA Tour side. And I think a lot of that comes down to, hey, who's that lefty? What does he do well? What doesn't he do well? Is he getting top end partners? And then what does he do with, I mean, he's got a paddle deal now. Like, this guy was keeping score in Arizona, and now he's got a paddle deal and he's playing Premier. I'm excited to see him back. Like you said, hasn't had the best results as of late, but his, he's proven to be a superbly capable yes. uh, player. You know, lefty. Playing with J-Dub also, you know, certainly helps. So excited to see uh, how him get back into the MLP uh, atmosphere for, sure. uh, for Dallas. Then our last day, day three in Las Vegas, starting off strong again, St. Louis again taking on Dallas. This one, one to one so far. Dallas won the first time, St. Louis then won in a dream breaker when they played in Kansas City. I mean, you know, two of the top teams would not be surprised to see another dream breaker here. Yeah, and the shock are, I mean, you want to talk about having the captain, Anna Bright, who we haven't talked about on this show yet, but she is the best captain in all of Major League Pickleball, and it's the attitude that she just instills. She's got the two youngsters who are playing outrageously well. Big H wins another men's doubles title with Federico Staxford in Virginia Beach, beating the Johns brothers. And then we haven't talked about Kate Fahey on that team yet. What has she done? Just wrecked everyone but Annalie Waters in singles all summer long. The doubles is getting better as she's getting better partners. So they are going to be a handful for that Dallas team that we just talked about. These might be the two best teams when you look at the collective. And it, it is crazy. We haven't talked about Anna Bright or Kate Fahey yet. Both amazing players, Anna Bright, like you said, just that captaincy. And even when, you know, even if she has kind of an off tournament uh, and doesn't really have the results she wants, I guess she went out a little bit earlier in mix than she is used yeah. to with Diascu. But she was still there cheering on all of her teammates, yes. cheering on Hayden, Kate, uh, and, and Gabe especially. So it's just great to see that, that connection from MLP really extending into the PPA side as well. Yeah, and that's what you want from your captain. That's why you put the money investment and time on the top end of the auction draft that we had. So she has over-delivered, but what happens at crunch time in this match may very well decide which one of these two teams gets a buy, and that is massive. And speaking of crunch time, Dave, our final marquee matchup, challenger level, Las Vegas taking on SoCal. This will be the Night Owls' final regular season match, their final chance to earn any points and try and get back into that playoff hunt. These teams faced off in Virginia Beach. SoCal won at 4-0, but Dave, you know what? Every single game was decided by two points, 27-25, 25-23, 28-26. So super even, the margins are so, so small, even at the challenger level in MLP. And this one carries a lot more weight for Las Vegas than it does for SoCal. Yeah, SoCal, once they added Yana Newell, that team was set. Purple Jesus, we love what he's doing out there, Eric Lang, and then Arena Tereshenko playing just, she just 
plays great in every major league pickleball that's ever been played. She just wins. That's it's crazy. That's all she does. That's all she does. So they're looking good. Now, obviously, there's that fight at the top, and they desperately want one of those top two seeds to ensure the buy and the automatic promotion. The dudes on the Las Vegas Night Owls have got to get it figured out. Blaine Hovenier and round them up Rafa, who had a very good run just this last weekend in Virginia Beach on the Carvana PPA tour side, have zero chemistry. They look terrible in Virginia Beach, and they've got to get that fixed. And on the women's side, Zoe Wong is playing very well. Yuta Castillo's singles has taken a couple steps back recently. So they've made some moves, obviously changed out their guys because at the beginning of this, and back to this is a marathon, not a sprint, they look like the it team. And now they may not make the playoffs. That's wild. It would be absolutely shocking. Hovenier and Hewitt, 0-7 in Virginia Beach. And, you know, Wong and Castillo, they were 5-2 and two together. So it's not like they played poorly, but you just need more production from your guys, uh, you know, if, if you want to be competitive. Yep. So we'll see if they can kind of turn the tide in front of their home crowd again. All right, Dave, so we just spent all this time talking about all this action, what to look forward to in Las Vegas, but it wouldn't be very worthwhile if we did that and people don't know where to watch it. Where can people watch MLP Las Vegas? Well, we've got our own channel, which is fantastic. We're uh, almost to the one-year anniversary of Pickleball TV, so everything will be there. There's going to be matches on Tennis Channel as well, and... While we're talking tennis, we didn't mention this, but I feel we should. Jeannie Bouchard got picked up by those crazy Utah Black Diamonds. So she is going to play. They only play in Las Vegas. So her tennis fans will want to watch. Her Canadian fans will want to watch. So we'll see how Jeannie does getting thrown in the cauldron here. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that she's on a premier-level roster at this point. I think... uh, Probably not a premier level player, but should be good experience for her. Uh, and you know, maybe she'll, I think she'll learn a lot and she'll probably be playing with Tyler Lung. I know they've played together this year as well. So excited to see Jeannie, excited for all of this pickleball. Yes. Again, Las Vegas, our penultimate event. After Las Vegas, we're going to South Florida, MLP Miami. That's gonna be our final regular season event, the final chance for these teams to try and make the playoffs, Dave. It's gonna be electric. It's going to be electric, and there are going to be calculators. Uh, You're going to be watching if Team A beats Team C, then Team B jumps over. But if it goes to a dream breaker, that's not enough. So that three points and how it's distributed is going to be everything on that weekend. And then all the teams that we showed you at the beginning of the show can do nothing but watch their fate be on the paddles of other human beings. That's not fair, but that's the way the schedule worked out. And I will certainly have my calculator out during that whole weekend. You probably don't love it as a GM. You know, you want the clarity. But as a fan, as all of our fans, I cannot wait for that. But one more event to get through then before we're in South Florida. And that's going to do it for this edition of Inside MLP. For Dave Fleming, I'm Will Doughton. Thanks so much for joining us.